We all know Shakespeare, and you're most likely familiar with his popular play, Redis and Julia D.B. And in that play, he has the famous line, to sequel or not to sequel? That is the question. And indeed, that is the question we'll be answering in this video. Welcome back to Web Dev Simplified. My name is Kyle, and my job is to simplify the web for you so you can start building your dream project sooner. So if that sounds interesting, make sure you subscribe to my channel for more videos just like this. Now, like I mentioned in the beginning, we're going to be talking about SQL versus NoSQL and the differences between them, some common misconceptions, and most importantly, which one should you use or when should you use each option. And to get started, I kind of briefly want to talk about probably the two most popular types of SQL and non-SQL databases you'll hear about, which will be something like MySQL or Postgres, and then something like MongoDB. These are very commonly compared to each other when talking about SQL versus NoSQL. But that's not all there is in the whole SQL to NoSQL realm. SQL is pretty well defined as something that follows the SQL syntax. You know, you have insert statements, update statements, delete statements, you have select statements, all of that standard SQL language syntax that you're used to, that is going to be what SQL languages query towards. And for the most part, all SQL languages have that same shared syntax. Some of them may add additional features on top of that shared SQL syntax, but in general, they all have very common functionality. And the main thing that keeps them all in common is that all the data is laid out inside of a table. You have rows and columns, and all of the data is related to each other using keys. So you have foreign keys, primary keys, IDs, and all of that is linking together all of your different data. So it's very relational. And that's kind of the whole idea behind SQL is it's a relational database for the most part. Now, NoSQL databases are essentially the exact opposite. They don't follow that standard SQL language, and they don't really worry about relational data as much. It's not as big of a deal that you have all these foreign keys pointing to things all over the place. When you look at MongoDB, for example, this is a document database, which means essentially everything is stored inside of a document as opposed to being stored inside of these tables, and these documents just have JSON data. And there's no idea of foreign keys and linking and relations to each other. That's just not something built into the actual MongoDB language specifications itself, something you need to add on yourself. But the nice thing about something like a document database is it's really easy for you to store unstructured data inside of your database because it's just JSON. You can add whatever you want. You don't have to have the same columns in all of your different rows. So it adds a little bit of extra flexibility at the expense of not being able to do some of the common things like joins that you can do instead of a SQL database. If you just look at these two types of SQL and non-SQL databases, it's kind of difficult to really pick a real winner and it kind of doesn't really show you the whole picture of NoSQL versus SQL because there's tons of other types of NoSQL databases out there that are really useful for specific situations. Take for example Redis. Redis is essentially a NoSQL database. It's a key value storage where you can store things based on a key and you can get the value. It's an in-memory database so you lose everything inside of it if you like clear your memory your server restarts itself. But generally, stuff that you want to put in here is things that you need to cache for quick lookup. That way you can really easily look things up, and if you lose it, it's no big deal. So Redis is something that a ton of applications use. Even if they have a standard SQL database, they use something like Redis to put some really fast caching in front, because it's just a really simple key value store. It's essentially like an object inside a JavaScript that you can store a bunch of key value pairs inside of. Also, you have things like graph databases that you need to worry about, which instead of dealing with tables or documents, they actually store all the information in this graph structure that links everything together. So it kind of takes the relational nature of a relational database and really just expands upon that because everything in a graph database is related to something else. There's connections all over the place. And that's the whole idea of this graph database. Instead of being tables and rows and columns, you're more so linking and graphing between all of your different elements with these connections. And that right there is really just the beginning of NoSQL versus SQL databases. There's so many different types of databases out there, it's pretty much impossible for me to say, yes, NoSQL is always better in this scenario, or yes, SQL is always better in this scenario. But I kind of want to pull back here and look at just SQL databases, talk about when they're useful, and then I'll start to talk about when some NoSQL databases are going to be more useful. Because I'm going to give you a hard answer here, there's no one true win that's always going to be better in every scenario. SQL databases are better in some relational databases, and then you have NoSQL that's going to be better for other certain scenarios, like that Redis example. So if we look at a SQL database, something like Postgres or MySQL, these are going to be really good when you have some structured data and you need to keep that data in the structure. You know, you got set rows and columns that you easily know, okay, this is the columns of all of our different pieces of data. They relate to this other piece of data through this foreign key. You can normalize your data. And generally when you're dealing with relational databases, it's great for some stricter data and when you need to do some quicker, more complex queries. One thing that's a bit of a downside with some NoSQL databases is that their queries are a little bit slower. They're more so geared towards writing because you can write data really quickly since there's not as many strict checks. 
but reading it is a bit harder because there's not as many rows and columns and strict rules enforced. So if you're dealing with a standard SQL database, generally you can read data, especially more complex joins and stuff, much quicker than you could in a NoSQL database, while with a NoSQL database, you generally can write things to the database quicker, but reading it is going to be a little bit harder. Another nice thing about SQL databases is because of all these rules that you have in place with like indexes and columns and rows, is it makes it much easier to know that the data in your database is going to be following a specific format, so you know that the data you get back from the database always follows that format. While with a NoSQL database, you don't have a set schema that you're following, so your data could look different depending on where you pull it from. You know, you may have a first name property on one of your documents, and that same document, that same table, another one may not have that first name property. So it can be kind of confusing if you don't make sure you set up some strict guidelines to make sure that your NoSQL documents are following at least some form of schema. So SQL databases are great in those types of scenarios, but where would you want to use a NoSQL database? Because right now it sounds like really the only thing they're good for is writing to them a lot, which yes, is one great scenario where you have a NoSQL database. You can write to it very quickly, which is good. And another thing that's great about NoSQL databases is they scale pretty well when you have a lot of different people connecting to them at the same time. A SQL database is not very good at handling tons and tons of connections going to it at the same time. And instead, you can only have a few connections at a time in order to be stable and make sure all of those strict rules are followed. While with a NoSQL database, it's much better at handling lots of connections that are going to it at the exact same time, whether it's writing data or reading data. So that's one huge advantage that you have for a NoSQL database. Also, a lot of NoSQL databases are much better at scaling across multiple different servers. So if you need to replicate your data across multiple different servers and have it all over the place for large scale applications, and you have tons and tons and tons of data that you need to store like this and make sure that it all is syncing up together properly, NoSQL databases do have some benefits in that regard just because of their ability to write really quickly and the fact that you can scale them across things much quicker and that you can connect to them a lot. They do work a little bit better in scale. But when you are scaling up an application that has some very strict requirements on your data and you're trying to read a lot from it, then maybe something like a SQL database may be better because even though it doesn't quite scale as nicely and easily, it still can scale and you get all the extra benefits of being able to read from it much quicker and much better and having that strict schema defined. Another place that NoSQL databases are great is when you need to store a bunch of kind of unstructured data. So let's say that you have like a user settings page that just has a bunch of settings that the user can toggle, true, false, maybe they type in a certain value, select something in a drop down, very unstructured data. Instead of having a massive table that has hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of columns for all these settings, instead you can just have a you know, NoSQL database that's handling those user settings for you. And it's just a small little blurb of JSON that is going to have only the settings that the user has actually modified. One nice thing though, is that some SQL databases actually do have this functionality to have some NoSQL components inside of them. For example, Postgres has the ability to store a JSON in its database. So you can have a column inside of Postgres that is a JSON column. You can store JSON information in there and you can actually query that JSON information kind of similarly to how you would with a NoSQL database like MongoDB. This is really nice because if for the most part your application is best suited for a SQL database, you can still use some NoSQL components inside of that JSON column in Postgres and get the best of both worlds depending on what exactly you need at that time. Also, there's absolutely no problem with using both a SQL database and a NoSQL database if your application calls for it. Like I said, Redis is something that a lot of people include in their applications to do caching that is technically a NoSQL type of database and then they still have a SQL database that stores all their data on the backend. That is perfectly okay. Also, if you're in a larger company, odds are that you're going to have lots of different data that you need to store, which means that you're probably gonna have a SQL database for some data, while other data that's more write heavy, not as much read heavy, is gonna have a NoSQL database that you have to worry about for that. Honestly though, in the end, the choice between SQL and NoSQL doesn't really matter that much. You can do pretty much the same thing with both of them. You can build any application with either one. So really, whichever one you're most comfortable with and most familiar with is what I would recommend using on your projects. If you want to learn the other one, sure, use it for experimentation purposes. But if you're most comfortable with NoSQL, just go with a NoSQL database. If you're most comfortable with MySQL, go with MySQL for your database of choice. Really, it's all about comfortability because if you're comfortable with the database, you can build things so much quicker than if you're trying to use a new system because it's so called the best system. In reality, there's really no best system. So with that said, I really hope you enjoyed this video and you can check out my other videos over here and subscribe to the channel for more videos just like this. Thank you very much for watching and have a good day.